Hello friends, level measurement with non-contact methods are achieved with two kinds of techniques as you well know, radar and ultrasonic. Now what to choose is again a big task. Both techniques can be applied anywhere interchangeably. But here course part is attached with these techniques while selecting one, anyone or other. Yes, uh, radar is basically costly affair than ultrasonic. Let's see what are the main criteria which differentiate these two and allow us to choose one over other. Let us start from uh, how they operate so that we can get a fair idea of selection. Here both techniques use time of flight measurement of principle. It is the, the time taken by a to hit on target material and reach back to sensor. Radar make use of electromagnetic waves which lies on X band range near to 10 gigahertz. And these wave travels toward this uh, target material at almost the speed of light. While ultrasonic make use of sound waves at a frequency of some hertz or, uh, hundreds of kilohertz, uh, which are higher than the human ear to respond. That's why these waves are not audible to human ear. And these waves are emitted in the form of bursts of sound waves in a very rapid succession. Both techniques emit waves to travel at a known and fixed speed to the intended target material, where they bounce off the target and return back to the sensor. Using the amount of time it takes for a wave to return to the sensor, the distance between sensor and the material being measured is calculated. A timing circuit is incorporated in the system which measures the time of flight. This is the basic principle of operation behind any non-contact level measurement. Okay, But yet it's not clear what to choose. Now ultrasonic sensor require an unblocked air column to travel the sound waves to the material because sound needs air to travel. Obstruction like mechanical agitator, excessive foam, heavy vapor, thick dust and light powders above material can deflect or absorb all the sound waves or simply act as a false surface leading to anonymous readings. This air above material is expected to be at atmospheric pressure or must not exceed above than 30 psi. So we saw ultrasonic sensor works best when air column is present above the material to be measured. While in radar this is not the condition as electromagnetic wave travels in a vacuum tube or in air or vapor of high pressures and it is not or almost very less affected by foam, vapors, powder and dust above material. This makes the radar sensor a better choice for this application. So my first most important criteria of selection will be what is above the material. It is vacuum, air or pressurized air or gas or vapor or whatever. Second, for ultrasonic sensor the condition for an echo to occur is that sound wave must encounter sudden change in material density at the interface of air and material. So that sound wave must not be observed by material and most of it can reflect back to sensor. While in radar level the condition of wave reflection is a sudden change in dielectric constant of material. When an electromagnetic wave encounters a sudden change in dielectric constant, some of waves energy is reflected back to sensor. While the balance of waves energy continues to forward to propagate into the material and hits at the bottom of tank or hopper and again is a second reflected wave generated that goes to this got back to sensor. Now this way you get two readings one for empty space and other for filled space. The radar transmitter with digital network protocol like heart or field bus can communicate these two readings simultaneously to control room. But a conventional 4 to 20 milliampere trans transmitter is not able to convey these two readings. It can provide you only one reading, either filled or uh, empty space. Radar sensor can pose a measurement problem if the dielectric constant of the material being measured is very low. As the most of the wave will pass through the material and the less wave will be reflected back to sensor. So my second most important criteria of selection will be what is the target material property that is density or dielectric constant. Both techniques face the beam diversion issues by uneven or turbulent surface of material. To resolve this, one may go for guided wave radar system. Here a metal rod acts as a probe which guides the wave to the bottom of the tank or hopper. Guided wave radar is more efficient than uh, throw air radar system as electromagnetic waves energy is tendered in a straight line over a probe while antenna type radar suffers much more signal due to dispersion of electromagnetic radiation and can be used horizontally as well and all the beam diversion issues and false equals issues are resolved here.
Now next criteria is operating temperature of material. It must not exceed more than 60 degrees Celsius for ultrasonic level. And this is the condition. It must be constant to achieve high level of accuracy. Temperature variation may cause inconsistency in measurement and disturbs its calibration due to change in sound wave speed with temperature variation. While radar sensors are less affected by temperature and provide repeatability and accuracy at measurement. So this is the third criteria of selection. The ultrasonic sound waves can be managed and measure the material surface with angle of repose. That's why ultrasonic is an excellent choice for solid level measurement. But here it is important to note that uh, using an ultrasonic sensor for solid level measurement reduces the effective range of sensor by almost half. So this fact must be taken into consideration while selecting. However, the ultrasonic sensor works best when the reflective surface is flat, which is possible in liquids. And the liquid surface must be non-agitated, non-turbulent, undisturbed. This is the fourth criteria. Another criteria is its range. Ultrasonic sensor suitable for tanks, hoppers, open channel, legs up to 15 meter or lower. While the radar can accommodate 100 meter or so, and mostly used for cement silos, bins, towers, etc. Of course, radar can sense a lot of material, but the energy of the retaining waves is so small that precise alignment with the sensor is very important. For this reason, this may be selected for the guided wave probe or special antennas. If your application is quite simple, an ultrasonic sensor can offer you good performance for longer time. However, when foam, vapors, powder, dust and pressure or vacuum above material is in question, then radar is the only choice. An engineer will always prefer latest technology over old one. But poor selection and poor design may land you in trouble. That's why proper selection is the key here, not the cost of technology. So friends, how do you like this video on level sensor selection? Any suggestion or any doubts if you have, please write to us in comment section. Sure, uh, we will read back. We will meet again with new video on instrumentation and limited channel. See you. Bye-bye.